God, be gracious to me, my Father. According to your love, pour your grace and mercy over me. Thank you for this day, my daily bread. Fill my heart with your word of truth and let it be strength to my bones. Restore my life so that I am a light for others, a spring of water to those in need. Allow me to walk in your presence. Your glory here with me now. Amen. Amen, amen. Someone say Jesus. How's everybody doing today? We are, I just want to reiterate the announcement about our worship CD. And uh, if you got this card, you can download it for free. One copy. This card is good for one download. Uh, if you're not going to download it, give it to us. And if you want to buy uh, a CD, you can go to the bookstore. So don't go in the bookstore and ask for a free CD. You get the free card. Carado? <laughs> so if you go, hey, they said it was free. No, the download is free, only one per family, and then you can buy one of these. Okay? Okay? So if you go in and say, I want my free CD, I don't know what he was talking about, just take this and be happy. <laughs> be happy, be happy. Let's, uh, how's everybody doing today? Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. We want to say hello to everybody watching in all our campuses, San Isidro, uh, El Cajon, uh, North County, our micro sites, all our, our people's in Coronado watching, all the people. Uh, Coach, Coach, I hope you're watching. And also Tom, we're praying for you, brother, to be healed. God bless you, Tom, and everybody else out there in the line. Let's give everybody out there a big hand. God bless y'all. <laughs> Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Stand to our feet. <sighs> Bow your eyes and close your head. Okay, bow your heads and close your eyes. <laughs> Y'all got it. Y'all didn't do it. Lord, thank you so much for your presence. Muchas gracias por su presencia. Su presencia poderoso. Your powerful presence. And Lord, we pray that we would walk in your presence every day. Every day, every moment. And we pray that we would sense your presence, engage, lean into, rely on, depend on your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give someone a high five. Say hello to someone next to you you don't know. A couple of quick shout outs. We want to give a shout out to Michael McGuire in San Isidro, who is overseeing all the PSTs down there. Let's give a big hand to Michael McGuire. Thank you. Uh, three weeks ago, um, I say today, Semanas, I said that this series that we're finishing up today was the most important I ever did in my life, and that was true at the time. <laughs> Next week will be my most important series ever in my life. And it will be true at the time. Uh, but in all seriousness, the series I'm starting next week is something that I'm really ashamed that I've never done up until this point. My heart is evangelism, and I never taught on evangelism. So next week, uh, we're going to start a series for probably four or five weeks to teach you how to share your testimony. And so I'm very, 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 very excited about it. And uh, it's going to make it so simple. We also have an app coming out where you can share your testimony on the app. And we'll talk more about it in the coming weeks. It's called Gospel Central. You, it'll take you through a tutorial on how to share your testimony in three or four minutes. And we're going to store all the testimonies according to different tags about your life, drugs, sex, whatever it is. And then you'll be able to search for testimonies to match people you want to witness to. And so if you meet somebody who just got out of prison, we can type in prison and they'll send testimonies to somebody who just got out of prison or who have been to prison. So it's going to be very powerful. Uh, we want to see... We don't even know how many thousands of people get saved from it. So we're very excited about it. Your testimony is very powerful. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Let's see your Bibles. Let's see your Bibles. Let's say word on three. One, two, three. Say word. Turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And if you are a visitor and you don't have a Bible, please uh, just lean over to someone next to you, not too real close. They may not feel a little comfortable. And just for all of y'all who are regulars at church, every week we get about two to 300 people who come to church based on surveys we've done that have never been to a church in their life. And so be sensitive to that, that you do not know who you're sitting next to. And vice versa. You just don't know who you're sitting next to. Ever, by the way, ever. So, amen. Y'all ready? So one day I was out, or one day, uh, one morning I was up and it was pitch black out. It was probably like uh, maybe 10 days ago. And it was a full moon, whatever the last full moon was. It was very recent. And the sky was black because it was early in the morning. But the moon was shining white, a full disk, circle. And I was sitting there looking at the moon thinking about how much light was shining off the moon, but it wasn't shining off the sky. In other words, the sky was black, but there was enough lights out there somewhere that was hitting the moon and reflecting to the earth, but you couldn't see it going to the moon. You could just see it shining off the moon. You couldn't see it anywhere else. But the moon was able to capture the light that you couldn't see and shine it out. A few weeks ago, we started a series called uh, Being in the Presence of God. And two weeks ago, we talked about entering into the presence of God. Last week, we talked about experiencing the presence of God. What it means to experience the presence of God. Today, we're going to talk about sharing the presence of God. And so I want to talk first about the definition that's in your notes If you have your lesson plan in your notes, we had a definition of uh, being in the presence of God. And as we all know, we're always in the presence of God. But the definition that we wrote down was that we are aware and being overcome and being transformed into the heart of God. In other words, when we become aware of the presence of God. And you can walk around and be distracted by all the things of the world and not even think about God. But then there are times where you actually feel his presence You sense his presence. You are drawn to his presence. You are being transformed by his presence. And in many many different ways or have a way, unique way God wants to communicate that to you. We also said last week that it's when your spirit detects and interacts with the presence of God. So the very first week of this series, I said to you, look, what happens, what if you can sit in a room and have a meeting with God and actually be in the presence of God? Would you do it? I think all of us would. And then what does that feel like? And how do you engage in that? How does it impact you? Well, what if you can put on the presence of God and it can overwhelm you and cover you? And you could take it with you when you left. So you pray, you, 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 you read your Bible, you have this encounter with God, which hopefully you seek to every day to have this encounter where you're aware of God's presence, you're aware of his love, his comfort, his vision for your life, and you're encouraged. And then when you leave this location, God is over there. He's over there. But in your mind, you think, well, that's over now. I'm going to go out by myself. No, you can take the presence of God with you. And you can take the presence of God with you. Now, understand this. God's presence is the same as the kingdom of God. You can't have the kingdom of God without the presence of God. And if you have the presence of God overwhelming, you have the kingdom of God. God's presence is the peace of God. The prince of peace, Christ, is the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all the same. And they all have all the power of God. They all have all the wisdom of God. They all have all the love of God. They all have all the vision of God and purpose of God. They're all one. And so imagine if you left the presence of God and you said, I'm going to take it with me. And everywhere I go, I'm going to take my awareness of the power of God on my life. And guess what that power wants to do? It wants to also touch other people. So when the moon was up in the sky, it was, even though the light was shining into the sky, and, but it wasn't being received by the sky. It just kind of went out there. The moon said, no, I'm going to receive the light. And I'm going to reflect it out. Imagine if instead of saying, I'm just going to re- receive the presence of God from myself, I want to share it with other people. Because the presence of God is God. It's the Holy Spirit flowing through you. And the Holy Spirit is living and active and he wants to touch people and minister to people. So in this story we're going to look at, it's very simple, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. 
every story in the Bible is my favorite story. Because I like stories. Amen. Can I get amen? Because the whole Bible is a story. It's a story about the salvation of man. So in the story, Jesus is walking through a town. And remember, Jesus is God. You've seen the Father. You've seen Jesus. You've seen Jesus. You've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. He is the image of the invisible God. So wherever Jesus was, was the presence of God because he was God. He said, thus the kingdom of God is upon you. I, am, I have ushered in the new kingdom. So when he was walking through the town, he was the presence of God. And when he was walking, things happened. And by the way, anytime, whenever you, whatever you saw Jesus do, you know what he said? You can do the same thing. Because the presence of God in my life and the Holy Spirit thrown, flowing through my life is the same Holy Spirit that's flowing through your life. The Holy Spirit that rose me from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that is going to uh, give life to you. The devil doesn't want you to know that. He wants you to walk out thinking it's just you and boxing the devil by yourself. No, no, you got the presence of God. It's not you anymore. It's him. You're in him. I am in Christ. And so when Jesus was walking through, the presence of God was flowing through him, attracting people to him. We'll get to that in a minute. But he's walking through. There's a crowd of people. And there's a woman who had an issue, a, a flow of blood, her, her customary blood flow. Well, y'all, uh, y'all, y'all ladies, y'all know. And y'all have that customary blood flow. And she, she, y'all got issues. <laughs> Women got issues. My wife's always like, you better be lucky you're a man. We all got all this stuff. We got to go. We hate Eve and all the stuff she gave up. Yeah, y'all got, y'all got it jacked up, but that's between you and God. I ain't even trying to, uh, you know, that's, uh, I'm so glad I'm a man. Thanks, God. Took me over. <laughs> Ladies, can I get an amen? amen. <sighs> anyway, this woman had a, her monthly flow that never stopped for 12 years. I just I can only imagine. The Bible says she spent all her money on doctors trying to get the blood flow stopped. No one could help her. In her culture, in that culture, when you had had any illness, but especially that illness and other things, you were religiously unclean. So you had to stay away from people for seven days or so until the bleeding stopped. If you touched something, it became unclean. If you touched someone, they became unclean. They had to be separated. You couldn't go to synagogue. So for 12 years, she was deemed unclean. Plus she was bleeding, so she was sick. Plus, if you had an illness, and they would attribute sin to your illness, so what kind of sin did they attribute to her illness for 12 years? Then she had no money. So here comes Jesus walking through, bringing the presence of God. And where did she go? She heard. She heard. Let's look what it says. In chapter 5, verse 23, verse 24, it says, Mark 5, 24 says, when Jesus went with them, a great multitude followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, had suffered many things from many physicians. She spent all she had and was no better, rather she grew worse. One, everyone say, the people thronged him. They were just mobbing him. Number one in your notes, when you carry the presence of God, everyone say carry. When you carry the presence of God, obviously you're not carrying physically, but the, the presence of God is all over you. Sometimes you can just meet people and God's all over them. You see it. You can hear it. You can sense it. So in the metaphorical sense, you are carrying the presence of God. When you carry the presence of God, it spills over into the places where you go. In other words, it's not limited to what this cape, you can see with this cape. It flows out. It impacts people. Some people's presence are powerful. It just impacts people in, in, their, in their office, at their job, at their school, wherever they walk. And here's Jesus walking. And, you know, the people heard he was walking. They saw his miracles, but they also sensed that there was something different about him, the presence of God. And he was just flowing. People just wanted to come touch him, talk to him. You see that with celebrities. Sometimes celebrities will walk through crowds and, uh, 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 people and they just want to touch them. Like, what is that going to do? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. They're going to be able to say, I touched him. And they're not going to wash their hand for about a minute. And then they're going to forget about it. But nothing. But when they touched Jesus, the presence of God flowed out and touched them back. You have to understand when you pray in the morning that this is not about, Lord, make me feel good. Help me get through my day. This is, Lord, Lord, put something on me. Ho, ho, ho. Say, say, ho, 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 ho. Say, say with me. Say, Lord. 
put something on me that I can take throughout my day. And then you get up and then you go to work. Now, forget what you feel. Because if you don't feel all good, that doesn't mean he's not there. It just means you don't feel all good. <laughs> and because you don't feel all good, guess what's going to happen? You're probably going to pray more. I was talking to a friend last night. We were talking about evangelism. And he says, and we were sitting in a coffee bean talking. And he said something to me. I screamed out loud. He said, I don't want to worry about anything. That's what he said. I don't want to worry about anything. And I said, whoa. And he says, when I worry, that's my clue to pray. You know, the Bible says don't worry about anything. Matthew 6, don't worry about anything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And so when you say, Lord, put this on me and you take that with you, Lord, I'm taking this to work. I'm taking this to school. I'm taking this to, to and by the way, and when you say I'm taking this to, and then that to, whatever that to is, or proper English to, whatever that place is, you, you may think, you know, I can't take this in here. Then you can't go there. Because if you find yourself doing this, and I'm going to go on my own, all right, you shouldn't go there. So if you find yourself, if you find yourself, hey, I'm not saying you can't do this, but you may get a little too freaky that, oh, hey, I can't. <laughs> you, better, you better put that back on and say, okay, let me get back into this mode, okay, hey. <laughs> Man, I didn't know I still had that in me. I said, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I knew I had it in me. Number two, when you walk in the presence of God, ministry opportunities walk up to you. Oh, when you walk with this on, ministry opportunities are going to walk up to you. Why? You know what Jesus said? If you lift me up, which that's what this is. When you lift me up, I will lift people to, I will draw men to myself. You are only the middle person. You're, only, you're the middle man. You don't help anybody. You submit to God and God helps. And so when you say, Lord, I'm going I'm to carry this presence to work tomorrow and, uh, and I will expect you to draw people onto yourself. So I'm going to be ready. If you say that to God, God, I'm ready. I want to carry your presence tomorrow. Everyone say, I want to carry God's presence tomorrow. <laughs> say, forget that, Miles. I want to carry him today. So wherever you go today, I want you to carry. You're, you're, you're going to go to some brunch somewhere, carry God's presence. And so when someone cuts in front of you and gets the last of the eggs because it was, it was getting low, <laughs> and you don't want to wait for them to bring out the fresh eggs, which when it gets to the bottom of the pan, you need to step back, kiss yourself, and let someone else go because they're going to bring a fresh pan out. Don't get all hyped up. you got to get it. And you just wait and say, look, you don't want to mate. And you have them bring the fresh eggs out. And you say, Lord, you know what, God, I'm good with that. <laughs> but bless them right now, okay? <laughs> look what happened. It says, it says in verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, and the presence and what the presence was doing. What was the presence doing? It was helping people. It was healing the unhealable. It was loving the unlovable. It was giving sight to the blind. The lame was walking. That's what his presence was doing. That's what the presence of God does. That's what the presence of God does. It aligns things with the kingdom of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What makes that happen? The presence of God. And then it says, she said in verse 28, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the blood, fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus immediately knowing, knowing, and what happened was she's walking and all of a sudden the people were thronging him, mobbing him. But then she also was drawn to hope. Why? Because the presence is the hope of God. It's everything God is. It's, there's nothing that God is that's not in his presence. And everything God is is in his presence in full force. It's a matter of how much do you let it flow out of you. Or is it all about, I'm going to put this in my pocket because I don't want no one to see because this is all about making me feel good. Oh, no, let it flow. There's plenty for you to get all you can get and everyone else to get all they can get because God is infinite. can't be measured. can't put them in a cup, only in your head. 
You got a little God, it ain't the God of the Bible. Because God of the Bible is not little. He's huge. He's immeasurable. Now, understand this. Here's this lady. She gets drawn to the presence of God. When you take this to work tomorrow, if you say, Lord, I, I, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't know what that means and I don't know what I feel and I don't know what's supposed to happen. But I, if you get up in the morning and say, Lord, I acknowledge your presence, which is what we talked about the first week, acknowledging his presence. I want to be drawn closer to you. I want to put the presence on and, Lord, I want to take it to work. I want to wear it all day. I want to wear it all day. There is a big difference between having principles, biblical principles, and godly presence. Those are two very different things. You could have biblical principles up and down and all around and fill your head and never know God. And have no power, no relevance. You are just an arrogant, all-knowing, stifling, spiritually stifling Bible person. And, and we all know a lot of those people. They got information, no presencia. <laughs> they got information, but no presence. And in the presence of God, you know what's in the presence of God? Love. No judgmentalness. Hope. You put that on and watch how you talk different. And when you put that on, say, God, I'm ready. Bring ministry to yourself. Watch what happens. Now, he's going to bring what you can handle because he's sensitive to all pain. Look what it says. Number three in your notes, it says people who are sensitive to God's presence are also sensitive to people's pain. Look what it says in the Bible. Verse 29, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt it in her, felt it in her body that she was healed it from her affliction. I know felt it and healed it are not really words. It's called Ebonics, and it is a teaching aid to help you remember. Well, how's that going to help me remember? Because you're going to go felt it. That's not even a word. Just by repeating it over again, you're going to say felt it. You wouldn't say felt. You wouldn't be driving home going, he said felt. You wouldn't say that. But you will say he said felt it. <laughs> to some of y'all, that really does make sense. <laughs> Verse 30, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him and turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched my clothes? And he looked around and he saw who had done this thing. And the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened in her, came and fell down and told him the whole story. And Jesus said, daughter. Everyone say, daughter. Amen. Say, Daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Here's Jesus walking. And guess what? When, when, when you were unclean, you weren't supposed to touch anybody. Because if you were unclean and touched them, they become become unclean. So if a rabbi was walking down the street, matter of fact, the rabbis were someone would call Pharisees, which meant separated one. They would stay away from you intentionally from all sinners because they were too, too good. So here's a woman who's not only just a regular person, she's sick, so she's unclean. She's a regular person, but she's unclean. So for her to touch somebody, it makes them unclean. For her to touch a rabbi was like, what are you doing? So she touched him, his clothes, and then when he felt the power, why did he feel the power? Feel the power? Because God's presence is very sensitive. You know that God knows every single one of your pains, every fear you have, every concern you have, God knows. And he looks around this room, he goes, ah, oh, that person has been raped. That person has been molested. That person robbed somebody. That person's lying, cheating, stealing. That person's a racist. That person's worried about their money. That person's suicide. He knows all of that. All of that. And he's trying to help all y'all. But what he's going to do with you, he's going to say, okay, and he'll say to me, okay, Miles, I'm not going to tell you all of them because you can't handle it. But I want you to focus on that person. Every time I preach, I find people in the audience that he says, okay, I want you to look at that person, look at that person. And I go back to the same people. And I pray for them while I'm speaking. A lot of times they'll get saved. I don't, it's not because I pray for them, but he'll just say, that one right there, that one right there, that one right there. So he's going to make you sensitive. And he says, I felt something. I felt this lady touch me. And I, and I noticed her faith draw power. That's how sensitive. Whoa. Whoa. 
if you're ever in a room and God just, it could be that their faith, God is saying, focus on that person right there. Pray for that person. Go over there and talk to that person. What am I going to say? I'll tell you when you get there. And so Jesus was walking and he felt this lady's faith. Matter of fact, when, they, when, they, when, they, when the four paralytics lowered their friend through the ceiling, he said he saw that faith. He, he felt that faith. And then he turned around and he says, your faith has made you well. But here's what happened. He's a rabbi. She, unclean woman, touched him. What? Here's what happened. She didn't make him unclean. He is so powerfully clean that his cleanness purified her sin. It's the opposite. See, in the, in the world, it's like, I don't want to make you clean. He said, no, no, when you touch God, you can't make him unclean. He is so super clean, Mr. Clean, that his cleanness cleans you. <laughs> That's why no matter, when, don't waste your time saying, well, I got to fix this before I come to Christ. I got to f- stop doing that before I come to Christ. I got to stop smoking cigarettes. I got to stop. No, no, stop. You know, when I, when, I, when I was a kid, we didn't have a dishwasher. We had human dishwashers. <laughs> then we got a dishwasher. And I noticed that when you get a dishwasher, how many of y'all have a dishwasher? Raise your hand real high. Is the dishwasher where you live? Okay, very good. How many of you are the dishwasher? Wow, okay. So there's really not that big a difference. Because if you notice when you have a dishwasher, and, and, and tell me if you ever thought this before. Especially if you're a guy and your wife, you bought a dishwasher and your wife has a dishwasher and your wife tells you before you put the dishes in the dishwasher, you have to wash them. If you're a guy and, and, you, and, you, and that hits you one day and you say, that don't make any sense, say amen. amen. It's like, wait a minute, I just spent all this money for a dishwasher. Why do I have to wash it? Why don't I just give it two more wipes and we're done? I could have saved or whatever grand that I paid for the dishwasher. Because you got to wipe it, get all the chunks off, you got to wipe it out, get all the stains off, then put it in so some hot water can blow on it. <laughs> well, if I just do that a couple more times, I don't need a dishwasher. That's a fact. <laughs> the reason being is that the dishwasher can't handle all your junk. Can't handle the chunks of food. We think God's like that. I got to clean myself up. Then I'm going to give myself to God. Why? He can't handle your stuff? He can handle everything. This woman, 12 years. Jesus wasn't even looking at her. He didn't have to pray for her. He's just walking down the street and presence was flowing all around him. And she came by and said, I just want to touch his clothes. Whew, she was healed. Why? Because God is powerful. In a minute, you're going to have an opportunity to reach out and touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Not this. Don't be all coming up here and trying to touch all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I have to call security. <laughs> you're going to have an opportunity to say, Lord, uh, I need your presence in my life. I have faith. And I want to touch you. I want you to touch my life. I want you to heal my life. I want you to forgive my sin. Or I want you to heal my marriage. Or I want you to heal my mind. I want you to heal my emotions. Lord, I just want more. There's some of you here, you've never given your life to Christ. And he's saying, come on. I want to forgive you. Just the way you are. If you ever heard that song, just the way you are, uh, you, you, that, you know, come just the way you are, it really means exactly that. I, when I committed my life to the Lord, I was... I had just been getting high, but I was clear-headed enough to know I wanted to give my life to Christ. He didn't say, well, listen, I'll wait for the, for the cocaine to come down, you to come down, and then it out of your system, and then, you know, brush your teeth and do your hair, and then we'll talk. No, he said, right there, right like that. And there's some of you who have been up all night, you, you've been up all night, you just came from the club or the strip club, and you just came in here. God loves you just the way you are. I was talking to a young lady once and someone said, oh, that girl looks like a stripper. I said, well, she is. Right over here. And your problem is, God loves that girl just like everybody else. So he says, I want you to come. So in a minute, I, my challenge is you to say, listen, I just want to touch the hem of his garment. I want, to, I want to receive Christ. I just want to be encouraged. I want more God in my life. For whatever your reason is, you, it doesn't matter to us. It, he, we just want you to respond to him. To him. And when Jesus told this lady, he didn't say you blankety blank like she had been called. Look what it says in verse 34. It says, daughter. Say daughter. 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 You're my daughter. 
I don't care what everybody else called you. All that matters is what I call you. You're my daughter. So in a minute we're going to pray in all our campuses. And, and if, if you want to touch the hem of his garment, if you want to receive Christ as your Savior, asking him to forgive you of your sin, filling you with his presence in the form of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Santo, in your heart. And you just want to say, Lord, take over my life. I want you to clothe me with your presence and all your love and everything you are. I don't want to ever take this off. And then there's some of you, you pray to prayer, but you're spiritually naked. You're walking around like this. There's no presence of God that's visible or uh, noticeable. And you say, Lord, I just, I want more of you. I want more of you. And I want to carry this to work tomorrow. Every day for the rest of your life. This is not a series. The series is over and then you forget about it. This is, as I said two weeks ago, this is the most important thing you can know. You can learn Bible knowledge and have Bible knowledge and it not change your life. This changes your life. And you might say, Lord, I just want to touch the hem of your I want to be encouraged. I want to be physically touched for healing, whatever it is. We're going to ask you also to pray and then come right here. We do it every week. So let's all bow our heads on all our campuses. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for your presence here today. Muchas gracias por su presencia. We thank you for your powerful presence. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that... You have created us with the ability to interact with your presence, to listen, to sense it in our heart, to engage it, to be moved by it, to be drawn towards it. And as you hear my voice, wherever campus you're in, and you're sensing God calling you to him, attracting you to him, and you want to say yes for whatever reason, you want to say yes because... You want to ask him to forgive you of your sin. You want to say yes because you just need to get out of your seat. You need to move forward. You need to walk away from your old life. You want a touch from God, encouragement from God, hope from God, whatever it is. I want you to pray this prayer with me. It's a prayer of surrender. In the privacy of your heart, say, dear God, I know that you love me. I know you have a plan for my life. I want to touch the hem of your garment. I want your presence in my life. I surrender my life to you. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my pride, my ego, my selfishness. Lord, heal me of my pain. Give me hope. Give me vision for my life. Erase my past. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you for rising from the dead. As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, if you prayed that prayer for whatever reason, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to stand in all of our campuses. God is calling you. He's walking through the crowd, and he's wanting to see, are you going to follow him? Are you going to pursue him? Are you going to trust him? So in the privacy of your heart, if you pray that prayer in the privacy of your heart, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to stand up. And I don't want you to worry about anybody around you. This lady didn't worry about anybody in the crowd. She is worried about following Jesus. And pursuing Jesus. So if you prayed that prayer and you're saying, yes, Lord, please, I want a touch. I want an encounter that I never want to let go of. And you prayed that prayer for that reason, for whatever reason you prayed it. On the count of three, just stand to your feet. One, two, three. Uno, dos, tres. Just stand to your feet. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. Stay standing. God bless you. 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 God bless you.
God bless you. Very good. God bless you. 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 We see you upstairs. God bless you. God bless you. We, we see you on all levels. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, in a minute, we're going to ask all of you who are standing, we're going to ask you to come down to the altar. And if you're in the balcony, all you have to do is turn around and walk up. The ushers will bring you down. If you're a visitor, this is not the end of the service. This is the most exciting part of the service. We are going to cheer for them. So if you're standing up in the balcony, you just go up and the ushers will bring you down. Everybody else, just come forward out of your seat. Let's give them a hand. They come on down. Let's give them a hand. Amen. God bless you, girl. God bless you. 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 Amen. Amen. God bless you. 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 Before we, uh, let's give all these people a hand. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Before we, before we send them out, let me encourage you in a couple of things. Take this with you. Every day. If you ever sense that you don't sense the presence of God, stop. It is relevant 100%, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Stop and say, Lord, I need your presence. And do everything through the presence of God. When you minister, you should not minister from principles. I know this information. Information is great. But without the presence, you need the presence. Because the presence is going to help you communicate it with power and sensitivity. You want to minister and help people from being in God's presence, not just from information in your head. Does that make sense? Because it's him doing it, loving people. It's not just information you have in your head where you spit it out with your knowledge and your attitude. No, it's God's presence overwhelming people. Because when you're in God's presence, a lot of times you don't have to say anything. When, when, when we go to heaven and you're in presence, God's, God's presence, you're not going to need a worship leader. You're just not. No one's going to say, okay, it's time to pray. It's time to praise. You're just going to respond. Give all these people a big hand. I don't know where they're coming from. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. 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 Where y'all from? Where y'all from? Huh? Where? Oh, Los Angeles. God bless you. Are you from another church in Los Angeles? You? Bell? Bell? How you doing? How you doing? Lord, we pray for all these people right now. We pray that you would cover them with su presencia. That they would be transformed by your presence and your love. And they would never let it go. And I pray, Lord, we would all walk in your presence every day. And I pray next week as we talk about sharing our faith, Lord, that it's from your presence we would share what you have done in our life in a very powerful way. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you move, here's what I'm going to say. Uh, especially if you're a visitor, what we do now is we cheer them into that room. And then after they get into that room, Pastor George will pray us out. So it's not time to leave. It's time to celebrate. Amen. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's come this way. 
Amen.